Hello to you. My name is Jesse R. Johnson. I'll be speaking to you about the lottery, Powerball, Super Lotto, Mega Millions, and Fantasy V. How to better your odds to win. Millions play the state and national lotteries, such as Powerball, Super Lotto, Mega Millions, and Fantasy V. The odds are gigantic, and the jackpots are also large. To have a chance at winning any of them, you have to use basic statistics. You must have a large enough bankroll to bet on them. The first main rule before the other rules is, do you have enough ticket money? Everything else is secondary. There's no something for nothing. Remember, there's no 100% guarantee in a game of chance. I will give you the basics of how to bring your odds down and your chances to win up. With these games, Powerball, odds of 292,201,338 to 1, payments of around $170 million, Mega Millions, odds of 258,890,850 to 1, payments of around $188 million. Super Lotto Plus, odds of 41,416,353 million, 253 to 1, payments of around 72 million. Fantasy 5, odds of 575,757 to 1, payments of around 170,000. These are all played similarly and identically. Here are basic rules to follow to bring your odds down and your chances of winning up. Number one, choose the games you're going to play carefully. Number two, have all the winning numbers from the beginning of the game you've chosen to play up to the present day, every one of them. Number three, know the odds of each game played. Number four, know when the numbers are drawn. Number five, know especially how frequently the numbers are drawn for each game you've chosen. Number six, how, know how long each specific game has been running. The longer the better. The more numbers that can be used for statistics. Number seven, know the jackpot sizes of the games you play. Now, all of the winning numbers when looked at as a whole has patterns. These patterns can be used to advantage. You are looking for numbers, number patterns. The patterns indicate probabilities, not guarantees. This must be understood. Powerball, Mega Millions, Super Lotto Plus, and Fantasy V are all the one the are the ones that will be used here. There are six slots to all four types of these games where the numbers are put into. Find usable number patterns. Powerball picks five numbers out of 69 and one number out of 26. Mega Millions picks five numbers out of 75 and one number out of 15. Super Lotto Plus picks five numbers out of 47 and one number out of 27. Fantasy V picks five numbers out of 39. There are a few patterns that are discernible when all of the winning numbers from the past are analyzed. These patterns, when used right, gives the player a better chance at winning. There are no 100% guarantees. There will be three simple patterns we'll be looking at here. A, horizontal, B, vertical, and C, diagonal. There are several other patterns that won't be considered here. Hold on for a few moments, please. I'm going to move the camera. Now, to begin, when the winning numbers are drawn, when the winning numbers are drawn, they are arranged in the first pattern, from the smallest number to the largest. In the first five pick numbers, and the sixth number, six one, is put at the end. The sixth number is the Powerball or Mega number, which is from 
the Powerball or Mega Number Group column. In other words, when the numbers are drawn, they're put into this order, the first five. These are the slots, one through five, and six, and the rows. These are rows, five, and the, and the, and the sixth one is the Powerball or Mega Number here. As you can see here, now we'll go to number two. Count how many winning numbers there are as a whole. Count all of the winning numbers, the whole thing, and, and in this particular example, the total number of winning numbers in all sets equals 700. We'll go to number two now. Count how many winning numbers there are as a whole. This is equal to 100%. We will now go to number three. Next, take all the numbers and arrange them by whatever is in the first slot, starting with number one, such as you see here. In the first row, no, the, the first slot is in columns, and the first uh, a slot has number ones, ones in it, then number twos, then number threes as the winning numbers, all of the smallest winning numbers. <coughs> now, then, then set the set starting with two, set starting with two, and then three, and so forth, etc. This will produce individual sets per number in the first slot. Set A, set B for number two, set C for number three, set T, U, V, and so forth. Now we'll go to number four. Find the percent of how much, find the percent of Find the percent of how much each set comes in out of the total of all winning numbers. In other words, you have 700 numbers as a total for all winning numbers. And in this particular example, you have 219 number ones, 108 number twos, 96 number threes, and go all the way down until, as in this example, 700. Now we'll go to number four. Find the percent. Find the percent of how much each set comes in out of the total of all winning numbers, and we'll go to number five. There will be no, no sets for some numbers inhabiting the first slot, such as 48, 35, and so forth. They might not even ever come up in the first slot. Now, this indicates that the percent for these sets is zero with those type of first numbers or near zero and that you have that you don't have to use those in the first slot or you don't have to play them as a high probability of them never coming in or never coming up will continue this can be used for all four games now this this here the first red line is horizontal this here is vertical this here is diagonal diagonal and we'll start with the horizontal number number one the numbers are first put into sequential order of smallest to largest horizontally in rows and so forth in the first five numbers number two you count the number of all winning numbers as a whole to get the sum. This is 100%. In this case, 700 was the totality of all winning numbers altogether. 700 was. This is 100%, all of them. Now, number three, put the winning numbers in sets using, using the number that's in the first slot, starting with number one. This here was the smallest number for the first, first column, the first slot right here, number one slot, then the next one here, then number two, number three, these are set A, set B, set C, all the way down to set V and V in this example. This would be set A of course. Then number two and then number three and so forth. Now we'll go to number four. Count how count how many winning numbers in each set. In this case that's two hundred and nineteen for number one. 108 for number twos, 96 for number threes, and all the way down, set T, six of them for set T, three of them for set three, uh, uh, U, uh, set V is one, and, and so forth. Now we'll go to number five. 
turn these numbers into a percent of the whole. There are 700 totality of num total number of winning numbers, 219 turn that into a percent, 108 turn that into a percent, 96 of them turn that into a percent, and so forth. This, this is only examples, but this is what you do. Now, this lets you see what set most winning numbers fall into. Now, we'll go to number six. Add the numbers in each row to get a sum. This is the rows, straight across. If you, add all, if you add all of these numbers, you would come up with 117. With this row, you would come up with 159. With this row, you'd come up with 154. With that row, you'd come up with 186. And with that row, you'd come up with 143. With that row, all, add all, all of the numbers in each row, straight across. And this lets you see in what set most winning numbers, pardon me, you'll use these numbers, pardon me, you'll use these sums to find the range, range of smallest to largest of them when, when doing vertical. When you're doing vertical, you will be looking at the range, because that's vertical, when you be doing vertical. Now, and it'll be the smallest to the largest of them when you're doing the vertical. We'll go to 6.5 now. The first five numbers horizontally can be added separately. You can add the first five numbers separately away from the six and or all six numbers can be added separately to get the sums in order to use them for simple probability purposes in the same way and form as the others. Now we'll continue. This lets you know not to go above or below this range. We will go to number seven now. Find the difference between two consecutive winning numbers in the same row. This one here is 117. This one here is 159. The difference between these two is 42. The difference between these two is 42. The difference between 159 and 154 is 5. The difference between 154 and 186 is 32. The difference between 186 and 143 is 43. The difference between 143 and 154 is 11, and so on, all the way down. Now, for, for, the, first, for the first set of A, This will give you the range of smallest to largest number and what not to go above or below. Now we'll go, now we'll go to vertical now. Vertical? Okay. We will start with, with number eight. Next, find the difference between any two sums of two rows, which I've just told you about. Any two sums of any two rows, 42, 5, Next row, 36. You do this with real numbers. These are examples only. This is the difference right here. Now, this will give the range of lowest to highest again in this form. This form. This is the difference. This is when you add it. Now, let me continue. This gives you the range of highest number and an idea of how far away the next row may be for the next winning number. See how, how far it is away? It gives you an idea of what the next winning number may come in, may come in around that. The next winning number may, may come in. Now, now, we'll go to number nine. Find find the difference between two numbers vertically in each row this will give you give you the range of each column of each of each set from smallest to largest number and will give the probability difference of the next winning number in that slot now we'll go to diagonal number 10 as before with horizontal and vertical add the diagonal numbers and get the sums when you add the vertical numbers, such as this one here from in each column, this 17 and 22, and you and not add, not add, but you subtract this number from that one, or that one from that one, that one from that one, you will get a difference of 5. 
you will get a difference of 5 in that vertical column. That will give you an idea of what the next number, how far it will be away. Once you do all of this, you will get a range. For horizontal, you can add 43, you can uh, not add, but subtract 43 from 56. 43 from 56 gives you 13, a difference of. 32 from 39 gives you 7, and so forth. 39 from 46 gives you 7, and so forth. This gives you an idea what the next number across will be. This one here gives you an idea what the next number vertically may be, and so forth. Now, this indicates the ranges for the lengths of diagonals also. This is six numbers diagonal. This is five numbers, five numbers diagonal. Three, four numbers diagonal, three numbers diagonal, two numbers diagonal, and so forth. And that's how many numbers it is long. We'll go to number 11 and you can subtract each number, add each number and find the difference. Number 11, you find the difference between two diagonal numbers, such as the difference between 23 and 22, 22 and 56, and so forth. This indicates the potential size of the next number in the next row of the next column. I want to thank everyone for listening and watching, and have a very good day.